I want to talk to you guys about that feeling of you don't think that your partner is going to get it until you break up with them, until you're no, no longer together, and then you just know, you just know in your core that that's going to wake them up. I want to talk to you about one of the biggest tragedies that I see in relationships that I watch happen over and over and over again. I did it in a couple of mine too. And that is, is that, think about it, when we finally break up with somebody, we're finally just done, we've had it, their behavior is just not okay, and they're not changing, they're not looking at themselves, they're not owning what they have going on, and we finally break up with them. And we have finally severed the ties, and we're over here, and they're over there, and then all of a sudden, they wake up. Now all of a sudden they know what they've done, they're willing to change, they'll go to therapy, they'll quit drinking, they'll get anger management, whatever it is that they need to do, they finally are motivated when we have made the break. Why? Because they have a reason. Because they feel the detachment of our energy. What do a lot of us do is that, yes, we'll speak up about these things. Not all of us. Some of us should. If you're not speaking up, you already need to be speaking up. But you speak up about these things that this person is doing, and we just go in this circle. We talk. They deflect or yell or fight, or and then nothing ever changes, right? But we're still sleeping with them at night. We're still having sex with them. We're still going to the party with them. We're still going to the wedding with them. We're still doing all these couple things with them. So guess what? They have no motivation to change because they're not feeling any reason to change. But in a breakup, wow, I'm alone. This person really left me. They weren't kidding. So what happens if you take the steps to set and maintain appropriate boundaries that have a consequence if they cross and you pull yourself energetically out of that if you're normally lovey and kissy you stop being lovey and kissy if you are you know go to every family function with them and you're just like "Mm -mm, you can go or I'm going to go by myself to the wedding when you start to show them that you mean business with this thing that they're doing, you have the potential, they have the potential of waking up prior to the breakup. I believe that a lot of marriages could be saved. I believe a lot of children could grow up in not broken homes. If people would be willing to set the boundaries and maintain them while within the relationship. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it feels weird. Yes, it's awkward. Yeah, people might go, why isn't she at this wedding when he's at this wedding? There's going to be questions. But do you want to save your marriage? Do you want to save your relationship? Do you really want to give it that one last ditch effort before you leave and then your person wakes up? If I would have done things differently in my past, if I knew this, I thought words worked. They didn't. So I was like, well, well, this isn't going to go anywhere. Then I started using appropriate boundaries and I saw things changed, change. And the people I talk to about this and I coach around it, guess what happens when they really do the work? They don't fuck around. I mean, they really do the work. Guess what gets reported back to me? Little wins. Because that's what I tell them. I say, report back to me with your little wins. Because it's going to look like these tiny improvements. That's what it's going to look like. As the relationship starts to heal. It's not going to be one big blanket, woohoo, everything's great, and everybody runs out, rides off into the sunset happy and gay. It doesn't work that way. That's not the way relationships work. But if you watch... You holding and setting, maintaining those appropriate boundaries and there being a consequence if that person crosses that boundary, if your person really means business and doesn't want to lose you, you are going to start to see change. 
that's what works. Don't wait until it's too late. If you know you're headed that direction, get some strength. Ground yourself in your worthiness. Ground yourself in knowing that you need to be the strong one right now. I know it sucks to have to be, always be the strong one. I know what some of you are saying, why is it always me? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But if you're the one that's watching this video, then you're the one being called to set these appropriate boundaries. Because you're the one that's awake right now and you're looking for solution. Try it. This doesn't mean being mean. This doesn't mean being a jerk. This doesn't mean doing any sort of abandonment or ignoring. It just means setting and maintaining healthy boundaries. And if that person crosses it, that you're willing to have a consequence to that, whatever that might be appropriate to you. And if you guys want to know more about boundaries, I recorded an eight part boundary series on my podcast. It's the Sweet Empowerment Podcast. Both the links for people that have Apple devices and Android devices are in the show notes below. You can click on that, but there's an eight part boundary series and I cover all aspects of setting boundaries. And let me tell you something, it's very real, it's very relatable. And if you have, have ever had any questions about boundaries, I'm sure you're gonna find it in that boundary pod podcast, you will find the answers. I've gotten so much tremendous feedback from that. People are like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't realize all this It was, was possible. So I hope you guys got a lot from this today. I am rooting for you. I know you have what it takes. We all do. We just have to be willing to put it into place. We have to have the courage to rise above and to do things higher and better and more effectively. Don't forget to subscribe and share and comment below. Much love to all of you. Stay safe.